Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of the BW Athletics Roadshow. We are here at Mike's Bar and Grill in downtown Berea, and tonight we're going to take a look back at the week that was for Yellow Jacket Athletics. We'll also sit down with head football coach Jim Hilbert, star kicker Dean Saris, wrestler Jaden Hinton, and then take a look at the week ahead for Yellow Jacket Athletics, starting off with the football program in its first overtime game since 2016, the Bolton Wallace University football team came back from 13 points down in the fourth quarter to defeat Heidelberg University in an Ohio Athletic Conference road finale by the final score of 21 to 20 inside Horniman Stadium. BW improved to 7 and 2 overall, 7 and 1 in Ohio Athletic Conference play, and they are now 51 and 24 in the all-time series with Heidelberg who fell to Six and three overall and five and three in Ohio Athletic Conference play. Offensively, the Yellow Jackets were led by junior quarterback Joey Marisek. The North Royalton native completed 13 of his 25 passes for 150 yards with one touchdown and the game winning two point conversion pass against one interception. And then senior All OAC running back John Murray Jr. out of Cincinnati rushed for 80 yards on 25 carries. Junior wide receiver Elijah Arnett caught five passes for 89 yards and one touchdown and freshman wide out Tim Conwell caught six passes for 42 yards with the touchdown in overtime defensively senior linebacker Dylan O'Donohue recorded a career and game high 12 total tackles and right now we're going to welcome in the guy who helped engineer that comeback victory at Heidelberg head football coach Jim Hilbert coach thank you for joining us always a pleasure hey, thanks for having me back it's been your uh it's been uh, great the last couple of weeks. Yeah, it sure has. It's been solid work for you, your team as a whole. You know, how good does it feel to be riding the winning streak that you are going into the regular season finale? Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. I told the team today, uh, everybody counted us out for, uh, counted us out for dead after the first three games. We were one and two, and uh, I know a lot of people out there, a lot of doubters out there did not think much of our, our team and where we were going. Guys, I see – made a concerted effort obviously looking at themselves in the mirror uh, to change what was going on they did that and ever since that Ohio Northern game things have gotten better better and better and uh, the last two weeks I think we played some really good football uh, the capital game went on the road uh, handled our business played really well played some physical football and then last week uh, we faced a lot of adversity people don't know about this but uh, a train stopped our bus <laughs> twice. Uh, we were about 35 minutes late to the game, uh, playing in 35, 40 mile an hour winds. Uh, you know, we got off to a slow start as a team, and also we were down 13 to nothing, uh, but came back to second half, hung around, hung around. Uh, we changed momentum by making some big plays. When they tried to fake the punt, we stopped that, played some good defense, and then our offense started rolling, did some really good things to get it to 13 and 13, and then. That was a gritty and gutsy win. Uh, it really showed the heart of a champion that game. It was unbelievable. And uh, really proud of our guys to go into the finale 7-2 and two and have a chance to get a share of a league title, you know, yeah. to play uh, Mount Union at home in the senior night, it's the senior weekend. Yeah, I mean, you can't ask for a better script for this week. But before we get to this week's opponent, taking a further look back at that, week, uh, that win over Heidelberg, like you said, not an easy one. You had a lot of factors that maybe people didn't know about going in but then you you get those 13 points back in the fourth quarter you're able to force overtime what was it like to watch the team kind of embrace that adversity and collectively overcome it well the, the thing about us too is that we've been in a lot of close games and we have faced some adversity this year you've had to come from behind yes, a lot too a lot as a team and then obviously coming from behind the Ohio Northern game the Marietta game the Wilmington game there's a lot of games that we we were in tight games, and our guys didn't flinch, just kept playing. And, you know, every there's obviously those little plays during the second half where it changed the momentum of the game. You could tell it started steamrolling. Started going our way, started getting, obviously, all that momentum. And then guys coming up big. Elijah Arnett's catch, uh, which I don't know how people saw it, on, saw it on the video, was unbelievable. I think it was a third down, third long catch. Went over the top of somebody, caught it. It was unbelievable. Dean Saris uh, kicking the ball in those those two kicks in that wind. The last one was a curveball, you know, and the way he had that hook on it and the way the team came together uh, 
and blocked well for him, and he made two critical kicks to get us in that situation. Eric Felder, that pick in the end zone on third down was a huge turn, uh, turn of events. When it was 13 to 10. We get the interception. We go down, kick a field goal to tie it up 13-13 to get us in overtime. And I had my mind made up Thursday. We were going to go for two. Uh, and obviously our offense, I had trust in our offense with Coach Orts and obviously the rest of our offensive guys. And Joey made some great catches. Timmy Conwell on his little stick and nod route. And Elijah Arnett uh, making a great catch for a two-point conversion. Total team effort. It was a total team win. And I'm really proud of my coaching staff and the, and the football team. You, you mentioned having your mind made up going for two pretty much midweek. Did you see the forecast coming? Like, did you were you expecting some less than ideal kicking conditions? Well, first going I, knew, in? I knew this. I say I knew it was going to be windy. I didn't know how windy, uh, but I knew this. They have 33 seniors, 12 more grad, 12 more grad with grad uh, seniors, and I knew if we're on the road and we're in a dog fight, if I get a chance to take for two and steal a win out of Tiffin against that team, I'm going to do it. And I thought it was – I didn't want to go back and forth with them because I know they have a really good offense. I wanted to get that. And we had a – Coach Orts and those guys had, you know, had some two-point plays ready. They designed them. They were, they were confident in them, and our guys executed it to it. Yeah. No doubt execution was key. Um, taking a look at, at some of the guys individually that you mentioned, first Elijah Arnett. Um, he doesn't always get the ball thrown in his direction because there's a multitude of options for the quarterbacks. But when he does, he seems to make big plays. How nice is it, do you think, for those quarterbacks to know that they can go? Elijah may not be, you know, the top option all the time, but when you go to him, he's going to make the plays, and you can have that trust in him and guys like Darius Stokes that even if they only get two or three passes thrown their way a game, they're going to make plays. Oh, yeah, guys, like I said, guys, big-time players step up in big-time games. Elijah Arnett has done that. Obviously, guys like Darius Stokes, Timmy Conwell, Mikel Love, those guys have all stepped up in, in times of need during games. Elijah Arnett, obviously, some of the catches he made this past this past weekend. Timmy, the, I thought our wide receivers did it in a whole, just as a whole, as a unit, did a really good job this past Saturday. Yeah, Tim Conwell was a guy that early on in the season – was playing mostly special teams and then gradually worked his way into the offense. What is it about his practice habits that allow him to be successful on game day when you start building up those reps on offense? Hard worker, smart football player, obviously knows the playbook, runs some great routes, and he's Mr. Reliable. You know he's going to catch the ball, and he does, does a great job, knows what to do when he gets the ball and what his number's called, and just a really – he's a great person, a uh, great kid. I'm really proud of him coming as a freshman to make a difference for us. You've run with two quarterbacks this whole season. Both Reese and Joey have seen significant time and made plays for you, both with their legs and throwing the ball as well. Both delivered with touchdown passes on Saturday against Heidelberg. How have these guys been able to make it work when they've been alternating and, you know, avoiding that – well, I want to be the guy, or I should right. be the guy mentality. It seems like they're both pretty I selfless think, guys. Yeah, I think they're both, like I said, like you said, unselfish young men. Uh, want to do what's best for the football team. And we're trying to play to their strengths. You know, and I think I think Coach Orch and Coach Carlson and the rest of our staff have done a great job of being able to do that. Uh, with Joey, obviously, his, his, uh, his strong arm and some of the things he can do throwing the football. And Reese, with his feet being a good athlete, having that savviness about him, moxie. All those type of things for both those guys help us win football games. And having that unselfish, unselfish attitude definitely helps our football team, as not as a whole, but as a unit, as an offense. You mentioned that execution on that two-point conversion was critical and it was fun to watch, but execution was something that your team did throughout this game as they go eight of 20 on third down, three of four on fourth downs. And, and we've talked about this before, your fourth down execution it seems like you've been consistently getting good production in those money downs where it's basically do or die. You're going to give the ball up to your opponent if you don't convert. What is it about those fourth down opportunities that these guys seem to really rally behind? First, I think they want to have me age about 20 years. <laughs> i tell you what, uh, some of the fourth down plays that we had to make that, in that game and third down plays were unbelievable. Guys stepping up and just making unbelievable plays. Uh, 
you know, you always want more for your guys and obviously your, your coaching staff and stuff like that. And our guys, when it's time and the lights are on them, they always seem to shine on them. And I'm really proud of my staff and those guys being able to do that in critical situations. Fourth down and third down situation, being able to do that to help us win football games. How critical was it to have those conversions when Heidelberg's running back is having a great day and their time of possession is is uh, it, the time of possession rather favors them by a, not an insignificant amount of time. Oh, it was big. I mean, we had to make the most of our opportunities when we had the ball. Uh, that's why I said that fake punt was huge. Uh, I think that's a big deal. Stopping, that's maybe stopping them on a fourth down too, and getting the ball back, uh, having half the field. Special teams, I think, played a huge role in us winning that game. From our PA, uh, from our field goal unit to our punt unit, being able to block that. Uh, to trying to be able to flip the field, our kickoff return. Darius Stokes almost broke one on the kickoff return. But our special team to, has to keep stepping up, but obviously from this game and obviously going into the next one we're playing. Yeah, speaking of what's ahead, looking ahead this week, you're at home for senior day and the regular season finale against a team from Alliance that's ranked as high as number two in the country. What are you expecting uh, from the Purple Raiders when Mount Union comes oh. here on Saturday? Oh, yeah. They're, first of all, they're well coached. Uh, those guys do a great job of coaching our guys. Coach Dart and those guys uh, do a great job. Well coached. They got some really good football players. Praxin, Praxin Plug, their, their quarterback, it all starts with him. Wayne Ruby, DeAndre Parker, the Aussie, the list goes on and on. And defensively, they have an All-American linebacker who's a good player. Uh, so for us, we need to just go out and play our game. we got to worry about us, take care of us. Hang around, hang around, and hang around. And then when it comes to fourth quarter, be able to, uh, the game's close, be able to make those key plays in the game. Because against this team, you have to be able to score touchdowns. You have to be able to score touchdowns. Uh, you can't, you got to almost play a perfect game. And our guys are excited about the opportunity. Those guys knew they never thought that was this would happen. Well, we talked about after the third game of the season, they know what's in front of them. Uh, they know they have to have a monumental uh, effort, and I know they would, they're they up to the challenge. I know they're going to have a great week of preparation. They're excited about playing off here, the first or second-ranked team in the country like you talked about. Uh, we're playing with house money, yep. you know, and our guys are excited about that and uh, have an opportunity maybe, uh, you know, leave a mark here at BW, you know, leave their legacy here at BW. And I know they're excited about the seniors uh, and obviously having them go out on a good note. So it's going to be a great football game. I'm excited about it. It's, it's never easy to play against Mount Union regardless of where the game is located, but how nice is it to have that at home uh, on senior day and have the crowd behind you? I mean, the Mount Union travels well, but you're going to have the home field advantage. Oh, there's no doubt about it. This is only the second time we've played them at home since I've been here. So it's nice to be able to play them at home. Uh, like the last, I said, last game and celebrate our seniors and celebrate this team. Uh, like I said, the rattle off six games in a row is not easy. No, not in know? this league. <laughs> and, you know, dealing with what we've been, uh, we dealt with and being able to handle it and keep improving, keep improving, and having faith in each other uh, and the brotherhood we have, I think it's helped us get to this point. And I know, like I said, guys are excited about 1.30, 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to our guys playing. And, and we're all looking forward to seeing what you guys can do against the Purple Raiders. Best of luck, Coach. Thank and you we so look much. forward to talking with Appreciate you again. It. Thank Take you. care, Coach. Thank you. That's head football coach Jim Hilbert, who has guided the Yellow Jackets to a 7-2 overall record, 7-1 in Ohio Athletic Conference play. And they've got a big one coming up on Saturday afternoon when they welcome the second-ranked Mount Union Purple Raiders to Trestle Field at the George Finney Stadium. Kickoff for that game is set up for 1.30 p.m. And we're going to stick with the football program just a little bit longer, and we're going to welcome in junior place kicker, Dean Saris, the Canton Glen Oak native. Thank you very much for Thank joining you. us, Dean. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, first and foremost, how excited are you for Saturday? Very excited. You know, at the beginning of the season, I feel like it was a lot of people that counted us out. And now that we have a chance to play for a share of the league title, it really lights a fire up everyone's book. What was it about this team that led to you kind of pulling – away from those early season struggles and instead of having those struggles, finding ways to finish games over the last six weeks because while it's been nice to win, it hasn't been easy. You've had to right. come from behind pretty much the whole way. Uh, I think a big thing for us is we never quit. That's not a part of our team nature. You know, 
we've been through a big amount of different uh, adverse moments throughout our season and throughout the four years I've been here just a ton of different adversity and I feel like we've grown from that and our senior class has done a good job to make sure we let the young guys know like you know whatever happens we just got to keep going and trust the team trust our teammates to do their 111th out on the field. Individually how do you think the season has gone for you kicking the football? I think it's gone pretty well there's obviously you know I'd, I'd like to have no misses but uh, there's things that happen but I'm always I always have a positive outlook try to take a positive away from each event each play and uh, my team does a good job of supporting me. Can you talk about what uh, your freshman long snapper, Tim Conwell, has, has been able to do this year? And, I mean, that's not an easy position to come in and, and handle as a freshman, but he seemingly right. has done it pretty well to get the ball back to make sure you have opportunities to get clean kicks. Right, he's taken it on well. He's not only on the special team side of things with the punt, but he's also been killing it on the offensive side of things. He's someone that the offense really confides in and know he comes up big plays, just like on Saturday. Coach mentioned it a little bit that – Saturday was less than ideal kicking weather, uh, 35 sure. mile an hour gusts, and I've I've been up in Tiffin and, and windy games before, and I've seen how unfun and ple unpleasant it can be for kickers. Yeah. How are you able to kind of use your pregame to uh, prepare for the elements that you were going to face? A lot of it came down to trust, trusting myself, and trusting everyone else on my PAT field goal unit to do their job, and the. Uh, like throughout the season, I've been able to trust them a lot. So in situations like that, I was really confident, and I just knew I needed to go in and do my part. So throughout pregame, it was a lot of uh, a lot of experiments going on, <laughs> a lot of like, all right, how far do we have to aim if we're on this hash, this yard line? And uh, it came down to the two kicks. I was I wasn't even aiming in through the uprights. I was just outside the uprights. Yeah, talk about that um, when you're trying to size up the conditions in pregame. Mm -hmm. Do you start by trying to hit it down the middle and see what it does, or do. like what, what's your what's your process for gauging the win? I usually try to get 10 to 15 uh, pregame kicks in. I'll start at PAT, move back, move around the hash marks, get a feel for that side. Sometimes go down to the other side if the other team allows me to get kicks on the other side. Usually get like two kickoffs, but I really get my judgment off the kickoffs because I know if my field goals can get high enough as my kickoffs. It usually gives me a good judge of like, okay, like if my ball is going to get to this point, the wind's going to take it here. It gives me a good judge if I need to kind of put like more of a line drive on it or if I can hit it higher. So Coach mentioned that he trotted you out there for the game-tying field goal in late in the fourth quarter. What was going through your mind when you were walking onto the field? And was anything going through your mind? Were you just focused on what you had to do? Um, obviously, there was a little nerves. Uh, the big thing for me is I had a scene on Justin Tucker was doing a 60 minute and he said he prays to God to thank him for each moment he goes onto the field. So I just, when I was going out on the field, I just prayed to thank him for that moment because it's a moment that uh, ultimately I was able to make a lot of fans happy, a lot of people happy, a lot of my teammates happy. And it was just a moment that I was able to embrace and go out there and do my job. Coach also mentioned that he knew midweek that if he had the chance to take a victory with a two-point conversion, he was going to do that. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you're the kicker. You want to be out there. You want to be contributing. Right. You want to be kicking those po extra points. But uh, how nice was it to see that come to fruition and the guys execute oh, like they did? It was awesome. It's it's a moment I'll never forget. Um, when we Right after we scored the touchdown, me and my, uh, my holder were running out onto the field. And he was like, come back, come back. We're going for two. We're in it right now. And I was like, Coach, whatever you say, man, I trust you. I trust my teammates. And I was excited. And uh, I'd actually told Elijah Arnett, who caught the two-point conversion right before I was, I was telling him, like, you know, this is, this is what we work for. This is what we're up here all summer for. I was like, it's moments like these. Like, go make it happen. And sure enough, he ended up catching that, giving us the win. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really been impressive to watch the way that this team has come together. And it hasn't been – one guy consistently that is relied on it's been by committee everybody's stepping up like right. one day it'll be Darius who has a big game or then Tim will come up with some huge long touchdown plays and, and then Elijah gets his every once in a while as well yeah. um, from your perspective though you see all these guys working hard and to see them be able to kind of share the wealth and and not have that 
I before we mentality. I, right. I, it, that has to be infectious to the rest of the rest of the locker room. Yeah, very, very. It's something that coach instills in us. You know, I mean, one of the big things that he harps on is don't flinch. No matter the situation, don't flinch. And uh, as individually, as players and as a team, we we know everyone puts in the work. So in situations like that, and coming back from a 13-point lead. We're able to trust everyone. Everyone was calm. No one was freaking out. We were able to go out there and do our thing. Looking at before you were able to kick for the football team, uh, obviously you had to make the choice to come to Baldwin Walls in the first place. Yeah. Uh, you had a, an outstanding career at Canton Glen Oak. You were all league, you know, all county. What was it that stuck out about BW? Why did you want to come here above the other options that you had? The coaching staff was throughout the recruiting process was on me the whole time, always calling me. Uh, my senior year, I had ran track, and they would call me like checking up on my track meets, like seeing how I did, and that's something that a lot of other uh, teams, people that were recruiting me, didn't do. And uh, from the moment I stepped on campus, it felt like home. It felt like I was able to, you know, come in here and make an impact. You're right up the road from the team that you're going to be playing on Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Uh, does that add any motivation or any, any extra to this game? Yeah, we know a lot of guys on the opposing side of the ball this upcoming Saturday. Uh, for me and Stokes, it's more like a home game. Like when we would go play at Mountain, it was a home game. I think here it's a home game for us too, and that it's a little more meaningful, I think, uh, to get the win over those guys we know is going to be a lot. Talk a little bit about your off-the-field pursuits. What are you pursuing here at Baldwin-Wallace, and do you plan on playing again next year? I do plan on coming back, uh, coming back from my fifth year for COVID. Um, I'm a sports management major. I uh, want to go into coaching special teams at some point down the road, any level. Um, I'm also a minor in legal studies in case I would want to go like a sports agent route or something like that. So I'm not really like solely set on what I want to do after football. Talk about the sports management program here, what the opportunities that you get. I mean, you're always helping out at big events, whether yeah. it be the CFP, the college football playoff, or the, the uh, Super Bowl, just big events that are nationally known. The Baldwin-Wallace University sports management program has a presence at these events, and yes. not just a presence, but a major impact on these events, the behind the scenes part of it. Have you gotten to experience any of that yet? And how uh, exciting are those opportunities? I'll get an upcoming experience with the Super Bowl uh, this upcoming year, which is super exciting for me. I know the people that have gone in the past, you know, with the Super Bowl, F1 uh, racing, the college football playoffs, all that kind of stuff, always have a blast going. They also make, I think the biggest thing they take away from is the contacts they make. You yep. know, this is contacts that they'll make for the rest of their career that they'll have to use after they graduate. If you don't yet have them, get business cards for yourself. It's a good investment, I promise. I've been to both the play, uh, CFP and the Super Bowl. They're outstanding experiences. Enjoy every single moment of it because those opportunities are fantastic. Um, before we let you go, Dean, again, a big game coming up on Saturday against Mount Union, number two ranked team in the country. I don't think anybody really after the start that you had with one and two overall, uh, gave you much of an opportunity to be in a situation where you're playing for a potential split of a league championship mm -hmm. with one of the best teams in the country. Um, how excited are the guys, but how focused are you seeing your teammates and how focused are you mm -hmm. going into those practices and those meetings with Coach? Um, I think it's it's something that, uh, like this morning, we were laser-focused. Like our, our lifts, both lifts, both offense and defense seemed to uh, very focused. There wasn't a lot of like goofing around going on. We we knew we had to get the job done. We knew that this week we have to be a little more focused than normal. Um, from a personal standpoint, I just go into it as uh, another game. I don't want to like psych myself out. So I go through the same routine, same kind of stuff. And uh, like you said, like a lot of teams counted us out, and that's something that's fueled us the entire season. We're on a six-game win streak, making a look at seven, and hoping to shock a lot of people on Saturday. Well, Dean, thank you very much for the time. Best of luck come Saturday. Me. Looking forward to seeing what you all do against the Purple Raiders. Best of luck. Thank you. That's star kicker for the BW football team, Dean Saris. Dean kicked two field goals and an extra point in less than ideal wind conditions.
up in Tiffin on Saturday to help Baldwin Wallace erase a 13 point deficit and then ultimately win 21 to 20 in overtime over the student princes to extend their winning streak to six straight games. Before we get to our final interview of the evening, we'll take a look back at the week that was and some other sports as well. The women's soccer team was seated sixth in the Ohio Athletic Conference postseason tournament and they fell in the quarterfinals at Otterbein two to one at Memorial Stadium down in Westerville. Sophomore goalkeeper Katie Scott led the Yellow Jackets with seven saves and junior all OAC forward Sydney Rice scored the lone goal for the Yellow Jackets. The Bolton Wallace women's swimming and diving team defeated the Bishops of Ohio Wesleyan University by a final score of 130 to 75 in the BW Natatorium inside the Lou Higgins Center last week. BW improved to 7-0 overall by winning seven of the 11 events as the Yellow Jacket individual highlights included freshman Rachel Fibby winning the 1,000-yard freestyle, senior All-Ohio Athletic Conference performer Bella Rattino winning the 500-yard freestyle and placing second in the 200-yard freestyle, junior Lauren Sliff won the 50-yard freestyle in a time of 26.26 seconds and placed second in the 100-yard freestyle just under a minute. Sophomore All-OAC performer Mallory Dondorfer won the 100-yard backstroke in a time of 103.48 and won the 200-yard individual medley in a time of 218.51. Senior Aubrey Siren placed second in the 100-yard butterfly in a time of 104.88 and junior Tia Reed placed second in the 100-yard breaststroke. The BW relay team, the 200-yard medley relay team, won their event in a time of two minutes. And the 200-yard freestyle relay team of Athena Pantoa, Morgan Ingalls, Emily Kusar, and Retino won their event as well. The Baldwin Wallace men's swimming and diving team took down the Battling Bishops of Ohio Wesleyan by a final score of 151 to 76 at the BW Natatorium inside the Lou Higgin Center. The BW men improved to 6-0 overall by winning 10 out of 12 events. The individual highlights included sophomore Gannon Millette winning the 100-yard freestyle. Senior Austin Olsofsky won the 200-yard freestyle. Junior Mason Kuman placed second in a 50-yard freestyle. Freshman Jason Heisler won the one-meter dive. And sophomore Jason Tafoya won the 200-yard individual medley in a time of 206.63, with also a second-place finish in the 100-yard breaststroke in a time of 103.76. Sophomore Austin Kingsley won the 100-yard butterfly in a time of 53.73 seconds, while freshman Nolan Zook won the 100-meter backstroke in a time of 57.58 seconds. Sophomore Gannon Millette won the 100-yard freestyle, and sophomore Gavin Squirt won the 500-yard freestyle in a time of 5.17.04. The 200-yard relay squad won their event, as did the 200-yard freestyle relay team. The 12th ranked Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jacket wrestling team finished fifth at the season opening Ithaca College Invitational inside the Athletics and Events Center at Ithaca College. BW placed fifth out of 12 teams and had five top five finishers, including two individual champions and one runner up. Junior all central region performer and number nine nationally ranked 133 pounder Jaden Hinton placed first in his event. After getting a bye in the first round, he won by a technical fall over Daniel Kirsch of Castleton, then by a major decision in the quarterfinals, then another technical fall. He won 17 to two over Ryan Kelly of Delaware Valley, Valley, and then won by medical forfeit in the finals. Junior All-American 157 pounder Michael Petrella, who is ranked number one at 149 pounds, placed first in his event and like Hinton he got a bye in the first round but then won four straight matches via pinfall first over Taylor Stearns of Castleton then Pedro Cruz of Ithaca then he pinned Jason Holmes of Castleton and Travis Jones of Ithaca before winning a three to nothing decision over 12th nationally ranked Hayden Brown of Johnson and Wales sophomore 133 pounder Brett Blaise finished second. He had earned a major decision in the first round 
technical fall in the second, a decision victory in both the third and fourth rounds, and then lost by a medical forfeit. Junior 141 pounder Zach Anderson out of Elyria and Midview High School placed fifth. He got a bye in the first round, then won 18 0 via a technical fall over Jack Taylor of Castleton. After losing an extra time, he then went on to win four straight matches, including two by decision, one by medical forfeit, and one by an 18 1 technical fall over Zachary Weiner of Johnson and Wales before losing to another Johnson and Wales representative and then ultimately ending with a 5-2 decision victory over Joseph Parsons of Springfield, Mass in the fifth place match and senior academic all OAC 184 pounder Griffin Rathburn finished in fifth place. The Baldwin Wallace women's basketball team was selected as to finish second in the annual Ohio Athletic Conference preseason poll. The Yellow Jackets come in ranked 12th nationally following a 2021-2022 season in which they finished with a 23-5 overall record and made a run to the NCAA Sweet 16. BW received three first place votes and had 75 total points in the preseason poll. They will be led by head coach Sherry Hare, who returns for her 33, 33rd year with the program. She's welcoming back 14 letter winners, including one all OAC player and four academic all OAC performers. The Bolton Wallace University men's basketball team was selected to finish sixth in the Ohio Athletic Conference preseason coaches poll. BW received 41 points in the polls. The Yellow Jackets will look to return to the Ohio Athletic Conference Tournament. Once again, after making it to the OAC semifinals a season ago, the Yellow Jackets finished fifth in the conference with an overall record of 15 and 10 and nine and seven in Ohio Athletic Conference play last year. And right now we're gonna welcome in our final guest of the evening. And that is star wrestler at BW. One of the many star wrestlers that we have here at Baldwin Wallace and it's Jaden Hinton. So Jaden, first and foremost, welcome to the Athletics Roadshow. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I know we're only one invitational in, but it was a good start for the Yellow Jackets, yourself uh, individually and as a team as a whole. Yes, sir. Um, we're, we, um, we're practicing hard. Um, I'm glad we're finally back, back in season. Um, you know, it's been a long off season. Um, and, you know, we're back in the swing of things. It feels good. feels great. Um, great group of guys, great uh, group of coaches. So we're pumped. We're ready to go. So, What was the offseason like for you individually? What were you trying to work on? Did you adjust your weight class at all? If so, how did that adjustment go? Um, I'd say the offseason when it, it had its, its peaks and valleys, uh, you know, personal reasons, family reasons. Um, and just like on and off the mat, I'd say – um, I stay the same weight, I, I would say. Um, you know, I was, I'm practicing off season, um, a lot of cardio, a lot of strength conditioning, um, just to stay stronger, faster, all that good stuff that gives me that, that, that little bit of an edge. So, um, you know, off season went well, so, you know, we're back and we're ready. So, talk about the discipline it takes to be a high level wrestler. I mean, you know, other athletes can go out after games and enjoy themselves a little bit with, you know, be it with food or just like parties and whatnot, but as a wrestler, you know, you have to be cognizant of your weight at all times, right. and you have to be very confident in what you're putting in your body that if it isn't the healthiest thing, you can burn it off in time. Like, right. Talk about that discipline and how difficult that is from a mental standpoint. I know physically it has to be difficult, but mentally it has to be just as demanding. Um, yeah, I mean, it has its, it has its – uh, its it, it's difficult, I'd say. It's a lot easier than high school, um, definitely. Uh, we do a great job of managing our weight. You know, high school is a bit more cutting weight than managing it. Um, in college, Coach Gibbs, Coach G, they really stress uh, we don't want to cut weight, we want to manage it. Um, you know, and it's tough. Like, uh, coming, living in Ohio now, I'm from Philadelphia, so we don't really know what Canes is. <laughs> so uh, Canes has been a big, a big uh, struggle for me because I, I, can't, I can't live without it. But just having that discipline of not eating it uh, come season time, um, you know, it, it makes a benefit uh, on the mat. It makes it a bit easier to manage your weight, too. So so you mentioned Canes, but 
being from the Philadelphia area, yeah. there's a couple foods that y'all are is. known for, there and is. one of them is a really delicious sandwich called a, a cheese steak. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I mean, talk about that. I mean, you you say Canes is hard to resist, but I would imagine a cheese steak in Philadelphia yeah, you, is hard to you resist. You can't too. go wrong with the with the great <laughs> Philly cheese steak. Um, you know, sauteed onions, peppers, uh, all that good stuff. But you know, I've never had Canes before coming here, and I, once I was introduced to it. Um, by a senior, Dante Gennetti, before me. He was like, I, I was here for a visit. He was like, ever have Canes? I'm like, I'm like, what's Canes? We go, we try, and I've been hooked ever <laughs> since. So, I, you know, I can't get enough of it. So. so, speaking of food, I know one of your teammates, Michael Petrello. Yes, sir. Has his, one of his vices is making that trip to Spud Nut Donuts. Has he taken you to Spud Nut Donuts? We can't get enough of Spud Nuts either. Um, <laughs> Uh, Stan Black actually introduced me to Spud Nuts, and we can't get enough of that either. It's it's kind of a tradition. We'll go at least once a week, twice a week, um, and we, we joke with with Coach Steve Thompson about getting an NIL deal. So <laughs> we're always with the, we're always there. We're always knocking about it. So um, and they make great donuts too, and I love yeah, donuts. They, One of my favorite foods. So they they do make some pretty fantastic donuts. Yes, sir, I they can do. I can co-sign that. But uh, all right. Enough about the food for now. <laughs> but we might get back to it at some point. But awesome. right now we'll 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 stick to. The, you know, the wrestling part of it. You're number nine uh, in your weight class nationally. Um, does that put a lot of pressure on you, or do you kind of embrace that, like people are, are taking notice of all the work that you do put in? Um, honestly, I'm embracing it. I love it. Um, I mean, it, it does put a target on my back, but I, I love I love a challenge. I love um, wrestling top-notch guys. I'm, I'm nine right now, but I want to be that top guy. I want to be a national, national champion. So um, I, I love I love the spotlight, um, you know. Bring it on, and and I just want to keep climbing. So yeah, being in an individual sport, you you kind of have to embrace that that yes, spotlight sir. because there's there's really nobody else to turn to. You can't. This isn't pro wrestling, and right. you have a tag team partner. You're out there by yourself. Right, right. Um, wrestling is an individual individual sport, but it can be a, a great team sport as well. Um, I've been here three years, and I feel like I've been here my whole life. Just uh, you know my teammates, my coaches. They uh, they make a big difference. So um, it can be an individual sport, but it, at, at times it is an awesome team uh, team sport as well. So yeah, talk about the the atmosphere, the culture that Coach Gibbs has built up in the time that you've been here at the program. Obviously, it started before you got here, but um, it just seems like there's such love and support among each other and. and Coach Gibbs likes to say that the toughest practice or the toughest competition is what you face in your own wrestling room. Right. And he really believes that. And after seeing the way that you perform as a team, you know, I am definitely believing what he says. And I imagine that that kind of seeps its way to the athletes as well. Oh, yeah. Um, I've I've been coached by multiple coaches. My I've been wrestling since I was four, so I've had a lot of coaches over the years. And what Coach Gibbs and Coach G preach in the practice room on the mat, off the mat is, is nothing I've I've ever seen before, um, and it definitely carries through us. Um, you know, um, you know, being that that top notch team, yeah, we 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 carry it through us, and we you know, um, we make them proud. We try to make them proud every every day, um, everything we do. So, you mentioned that they haven't, you know, they're they're not like any coaches you've had. What what makes them so different from what you've experienced before? Um. For one, their knowledge of the sport, nothing I've ever seen before. Uh, Coach G, he'll, he'll watch hours and hours of film uh, two days before matches for four tournaments, and I've, I've never seen anything like it. Um, they know, it's like they're, they're fortune tellers almost. Like they know what's going to happen, what, what, what they see, what they know is, is all good stuff. Um, and that all carries off, um, you know, into the next match, into, into the practice room. Um, and they, they hold us all to a high standard too, which is always a good thing. Um, they want the best for us. Um, you know, they, they want us to grow into leaders, not only on the mat but off the mat. You know, um, great men, great great dads, hopefully, great husbands, all that stuff. So, um, you know, they're they're great guys, and and we love them. And I wouldn't want to be wouldn't want to be anywhere else. So, how, how much did your decision to leave home uh, in New Jersey, the Philadelphia area, to come to BW, really kind of focus on the wrestling program and the family atmosphere you saw from Coach Gibbs and his team. So it's funny, I committed to BW without even seeing the school because of COVID, all that stuff. Um, Coach Z, Coach Gibbs, they were, you know, contacting me, you know, asking how I was, asking how school was almost every week, um, you know, every couple days a week. 
and that's what really brought me in because they showed they cared. You know, not a lot of coaches text me, you know, hey, how's you know, how's home? How's your off season going? So, um, you know, they, they, they really did show that they care. So, um, yeah, so. Yep. When you decided to come to BW, you, you ended up declaring your major as biology. Yep. What do you want to do with your biology major? And have you always been interested in the sciences? So I've actually changed my major about a week ago to from bio to communications. Um, for as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a vet. Um, I've had you know animals my whole life, uh, snakes, uh, dogs, cats, turtles. Um, and when I got to college, it, it was a it was it was eye opening. Um, you know, bio in high school is not is no different. It, it's a lot different from bio in college. Yeah. It's it's tough. <laughs> uh, I I tell my dad all the time. I've studied more my first two years of college than any than any uh, you know high school, elementary school, all that stuff. So it it, it was it was eye opening. So. Um, now that I'm a communications major, I, I think it'll be a bit a bit easier um, down the road, you know, school-wise, managing school with wrestling and all that stuff. So I'm hoping to go back to school for bio to be a vet. So that's that's my goal after I graduate here. You know, going to you know online school or something along those lines. So, oh, speaking as a communications graduate myself from oh, awesome. Baldwin Wallace, awesome. um, it's a great program. You're gonna learn a lot, so and I've heard. you're yes, gonna sir. be able to take it and do whatever you want to do in life. So. Good luck with that. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you. I, I know you're going to do great. If Thank you can you. handle biology, yeah, you, you'll you'll be in good shape. Yes, sir. I'm excited <laughs> for it. I'm excited. Um, you know, so does communications. When you talk about communications, does a career in like broadcasting at all interest you? If the, if you decide to maybe not go the veterinary route, I would say so. Um, I see. I follow you. I see what you do. You seem like you love it. Um, I could definitely see myself doing something along those lines. Um. Also, I have a business minor study as well. Uh, I had an internship this past summer, back in um, back in Philadelphia with uh, Independence Blue Cross. Okay. Um, it's a healthcare company. I worked in the uh, business field with them, and it was a blast. I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, learning new things, learning how to do uh, different things with that. So, um, I think I could focus more on that as well. Um, but also a broadcasting standpoint and all that uh, that good stuff. So. Yeah, you could. You could even do broadcasting on the side if you, you know, right, you right. go go vet go the veterinary route, and then if you want to do games on the side, right? Or there's always somebody looking for for broadcasters. Yep, or a vet podcast or something, something along. You those know lines. what? That would be a fantastic. Yeah. I would really like that. You know, that's very popular these days is uh, veterinary shows. My yeah. wife is is kind of obsessed with. Yeah, the, they're with they're them, great, and they are fun to they're watch. Interesting as well. Yes, sir. What's your favorite animal? Um, favorite any animal? I'd say a jaguar. Um, wow. Very nice. Big cat. Yes, sir. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. But um, if we're ta talking house pets or anything, I'm, I'm a big dog person. Love dogs. Always have. Always, I've had dogs my whole life, so you, you, you can't go wrong. Any specific breed or just a dog in general? Just a dog. I, I love all dogs, but small dogs are a no-go. I, do, <laughs> I can't do the yapping. I can't do all that stuff. Uh, I love a big dog. I have a pit bull back at home. His name's Chuck. Uh, he means the world to me, and... Um, I love big dogs. So. Yeah. Well, my wife and I adopted a, a big dog last year. We Our first dog together, we, we decided that we were just going to look and see what jumped out at us, and we decided to get a Doberman Pinscher. So, How's that going? <laughs> uh, awesome. Yeah. She is the love of – Yep, you all, can't I go mean, wrong. She is 90 pounds, but she thinks she's a lap dog, That's and dog. I'm okay with that. Yep. She is – Awesome, and That's like you dog. said, they give you unconditional love, and no matter how what's going on in your life, you know you can have that, and uh, yep, you, you know feel door. good about yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking of feeling good about yourself, I mean, last year you're coming off of an outstanding season, 25-11 overall. You recorded 10 major decisions, six tech falls, had 88 takedowns. You make the NCAA Division Three national tournament. What was that experience like as a whole uh, throughout the season? Just what you were able to accomplish. Oh man, uh, coming from my freshman year, only having five matches because of COVID, and then having a full season to my sophomore year, it, it was awesome. Um, just having that that college experience of you know wrestling seven minutes, wrestling having uh, riding time along the lines uh, as well, um, and just just getting to to Cedar Rapids, Iowa was it was awesome. You know, it was it was eye opening definitely. That big crowd looking down on you, those those mats. Um, those crowds screaming everyone's name, especially Michael's name, as he uh, wrestled in the national finals. It's 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 awesome. Um, I I love the sport. I couldn't. I don't think I could live without it, honestly. So, um, 
yeah, I just I can't say enough good yeah. things about it. it. Win, lose, or draw, when you go to Nationals, you kind of soak up that experience. And and even at the Division three level, you know, the crowds are packed throughout oh, every session. Wrestling fans are probably the most passionate fans I've ever been around. Yes, sir. Uh, res- I would put the UFC uh, fans up there as well because I've been to a couple of UFC events, and they are – raucous and rowdy yes, and sir, pack in the crowds i mean what is it about that atmosphere from an adrenaline standpoint like how much do you have to kind of just take it in for a few minutes and then be like okay i've got to block it out now because i've got to go do my job yeah i mean um you want to put on a show for them um you know those those hope my my first uh, home match i bw against mountain union it was you just you have to take it in you have to take a second but once it comes down to business, you, you do block it out. Um, you only hear what you need to hear. I only hear Coach Gibbs, Coach D, what they're yelling at me, what I need to do, what I need to not do. Um, and then once you do your job, once you do your business, you, you, you get the dub, then you can, you know, soak it back in. You could hype the crowd up. And that's that's really what it's all about, um, you know, is putting, a, putting on a show for the fans, um, you know, and having a good time, you know, putting a smile on your face um, and embracing it, loving it. And because um, we, we work hard. We work hard, and we want to we want to keep working hard and keep putting on a show for you guys. So. The, the I've always admired the determination that you get, the wrestlers have. I mean, when I was in high school, I played basketball, and we were holding our practices, and in the corner there was a rope climb, and the wrestlers were always on the rope climb, always yep. making it to the top and coming back down. And I think to a man on the basketball team, we all looked and went, Heck no. Yeah. We don't want to do that. Like, this is why we play basketball and not right. wrestling. I mean, it takes a special kind of athlete to put it on the line like that every single day. Yeah. And when you're hurt, you're sick, you're still out there competing. Yeah. Even the hurt guys now uh, on the team, they they get better every day. Um, you know, they were at Ithaca. They were doing um, pre-warm-ups, all that good stuff. And they were getting a blow in. They were getting, they were getting sweating. So, yeah. Um, it's always it's always about getting better one day at a time uh, for those guys. Whether you're on the team, off the team, whether you're hurt, not hurt, um, you want to get better uh, and help those guys that are wrestling. Help them that help them you know push themselves as well. So it's always about uh, good stuff. Solid first effort for you guys as a team. Fifth out of twelve uh, at the Ithaca Invitational. What did you think of the competition up there, and how nice was it to walk away with an individual championship? Um, it was it was awesome. Um, last year I took fifth. You know, tough matches. Um, but it, it felt it felt good. I, I felt like I wrestled really hard. Um, I felt like I had some good stuff on my feet, uh, neutral and um, and on top. I had about two. I had two techs, and um, you know I felt good. The uh, the individual dub was was awesome. Yeah, and it's nice to see some of your teammates have the success that they did as well yes, to sir. kind of help boost that team score. Like you said, the team aspect. Yes, of it. sir. Guys like Mike Wattrella, uh Brett Blaze had great tournaments. Zach Anderson. Um, all the all, they they all had you know great tournaments so um, and we're always behind them as well so and taking a look at the rest of the month of November over the next twelve days or so you got your hands full by quite a bit yeah uh, you go to Trine uh, for the Trine Invitational uh, this coming weekend on Saturday and then quick turnaround you're back in action at Ursprung Gymnasium for the home opener. Uh, on Tuesday night against Heidelberg, yes, and then sir. you get the Fall BW Invitational inside the Lou Higgins Center Field House on Saturday. That's a whole lot of competition yes, compacted sir, into a very short window. It is, uh, and honestly, we love it. Um, we can't get enough of it. Uh, you know, that's, this is what we pra- practice for. It's what we train for. Um, this is what wrestling is. Um, you know, we. You know, I, I can't say enough good things. We can't get enough. We're practicing every day. We're getting better. We're lifting um, just to put on a show, just to wrestle hard uh, in the competitions. So, when you uh, when you look at the schedule for wrestling, it's front end loaded November, December. So, through the second half of the semester, in the finals, and then through your break, and then you come back and you have three more months of the season left. Right. I mean, your season really does span essentially two full semesters yeah how do you handle all that goes into not only keeping your body in in good shape to compete but then also keeping your mind in shape in the classroom and not getting letting fatigue physically affect you in the classroom right uh it's all about time management honestly um if you manage your time correctly if you if you do it the right way um 
you know, do your school first, all that good stuff. You, then you have time for wrestling. Um, you know, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just time management. Uh, How long did it take you to get to get to really kind of fine tune your, your routine? Um, I'd say it took me about two years, my freshman and sophomore year. Um, when you're in high school, you just go from class to class to class. But in college, you know, you have a couple hours to you know, get some work in and then go to practice, get some more work in. Um, so I'd say it did take me a few years to, to, to really get that down. Um, once you do get it down, it comes natural. You know, it's, it's, it's really easy once you get that down. And the freshmen this year have done a great job of it, um, I would say. So they're, they're getting the hang of it. Uh, upperclassmen are showing them the ropes, and that's all we really hope for. Now before we get on out of here, uh, a couple more questions. What are your goals this year? What would you like to accomplish? Um, I want to be on that top podium um, this year at Roanoke, Virginia Nationals. Um, seeing seeing Michael Petrella get there was it was it was it was eye opening. Uh, I want to be that guy. I want to be up there with him, and um, I want to see my teammates do it as well. You know, another OAC championship would also be would be awesome. Um, and, and I also want to see my guys uh, succeed. You know, um, you know non-starters, starters. I want to see them have a great time love the sport um, and embrace the grind so and when you look at this team as a whole I know you're thought of well nationally you're ranked 12th a little bit lower than how you finished last year uh, does that add a little bit of chip on your shoulder and how good do you think this team can be oh definitely um, I'd say the guys took it uh, a bit personal saying that we were we were 12th after finishing uh, fifth last year at nationals um, yeah, I would say put a chip on their shoulder. Um, you know, and that's motivation at the end of the day. So it, it pushes us uh, on the mat, uh, pushes us in the practice room, uh, in the weight room, in the pool. Um, so we're we're hungry. Uh, we're hungry guys. We're 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 ready to go. So well, Jaden, congratulations on the championship from Thank the Ithaca you. Invitational. Thank you for the yes, time. Sir. It was Thank a pleasure talking me. with you. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll hit you up for a cheesesteak reference Sounds or re good. Uh, next time I'm in Philly. Sounds good. Let <laughs> me know. All right, we'll do. That's star wrestler here at Baldwin Wallace University, Jaden Hinton, who is coming off of a championship at the season opening Ithaca New York Invitational at the Athletics and Events Center at Ithaca University last weekend. That'll do, the, do it for the interview portion. Now we'll take a look at the week ahead and we'll start on the gridiron where the BW Yellow Jackets close out the 2022 regular season on Saturday, November 12th as they host an OAC Senior Day and Veterans Appreciation Day game against the number two ranked team in the country and defending Ohio Athletic Conference champion, the University of Mountain Union Purple Raiders on the Trestle Field inside the George Finney Stadium. Kickoff for the rivalry game is set for 1.30 p.m. The um, Yellow Jacket men's and women's swimming and diving team returns to the pool on Saturday, November 12th, when they also host the Mount Union Purple Raiders at the BW Natatorium inside the Lou Higgins Center. The Yellow Jacket wrestlers are back in action on Saturday, November 12th, when they travel to Angola, Indiana to compete in the Trine University Invitational at the Keith E. Buse Steel Dynamics, Inc. Athletic and Recreation Center. The first matches get underway at 9.30 a.m. The Baldwin-Wallace women's basketball team opens the 2022-2023 season on a Friday, November 11th, when it plays host to the number eight team in the country, the Trine University Thunder. In the Ersprung Gymnasium inside the Lou Higgins Center, tip-off for the women's season opener is at 6 p.m. They will also be back at home on Monday the 14th when they host the Case Western Reserve University Spartans in non-conference action at Erzsprung Gymnasium. The Baldwin-Wallace men's basketball team returns to the court for the first time this season on Thursday, November 10th for its second and final exhibition game against NCAA Division I opponent Kent State University. The Yellow Jackets open their regular season on Saturday, November 12th when they host non-conference foe Hiram College in the Ersprung Gymnasium at the Lou Higgins Center right here on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. That'll do it for this edition of the Athletics Roadshow. Before we get on out of here, I want to send out some thank yous first to our guests, football coach Jim Hilbert, star kicker for the football team, Dean Saris, and champion wrestler, 
Jaden Hinton. Thanks also to the sports information and athletic departments here at Baldwin Wallace for all of their work in making this show possible. And also thank you to our gracious hosts here at Mike's Barn Grill in downtown Berea on Front Street. And finally, thank you to all of you, the Yellow Jacket fans, both here at Mike's Barn Grill and those watching around the world. We appreciate your support for Baldwin Wallace Athletics. Until next time, and I want to remind you before we get on out of here, that next week we are preempted for women's basketball against Case Western Reserve University. The Athletics Road Show Episode 10 will be back on Monday, November 21st. Until next time, I'm Matt Florjancic saying have a great night, everybody, and go Jackets.